so it's that time, a Friday tradition like no other. <laughs> Brandon and Eric talking some NASCAR. Brandon, how you doing on this Friday morning? Friday afternoon. Doing good. Yeah, a- end of the week, ready to rock it, ready to get into this weekend and uh, have some fun. So we're going to have our first ever, what, Bush Light, Bush Light bet? We have my Bucks. Um, you know, I got my little Bucks stuff on against your Celtics. We'll just get this, no no if ends or buts. Just a simple six pack. Winner, sorry, loser buys the winner. Six pack of bush light. So a uh, bush light, that's fine. Yeah, just just simple, nothing fancy. That's fine because I want to win this bet just so I can watch you drink that nasty beer. That, that I'm good. <laughs> if I win, you can send it to me, and I'll, I'll show you me dumping it out, which is even better because <laughs> that's it. Well, I'll t- well, what's your six pack of choice, my friend? Bud Light, my man. All right, so six pack of Bud Light, okay? Right. Six pack of Bud Light. So you guys aren't here to listen to us ramble about basketball. You hear about NASCAR, and oh my god, we had it last week. It was we so had weird. it, but the driver I hate the most, Kyle Larson. You know what? He screwed us. As cliche and- as it sounds, you only turn left in NASCAR. He decided to turn right. On the final stretch, he was not clear. It was. No, you're good. a driver. You drive I racing. Yeah. What, what, t- just tell me his thought process right there and what he was trying to do. The only thing I can think of is the spotter was late to the call mm-hmm. of a car being outside. He sees the run coming just at a quick glimpse. He sees that car just right there thinking I can pull out. And the only thing that that car can do is push me at that point. And he's going to push me by the for the win in the draft. But yeah. the fact that it, it just had to be called so late because there's no way. He turned right into his right front. It, it looked like it was intentional. I mean, like everything looked like he was trying to spin him out like it was intentional on my from my eyes, from what I was watching. And if it was yeah. any other track, I would 100% tell you it was intentional. Mm-hmm. But it does him no good by him wrecking Kurt because – at that point, all his, all of his momentum is shot to where he's not going to get to the front anyways. So yeah. I will defend him in that aspect that there's no way that could have been intentional, but very, very bad choice of a move at that point in the race. So is, um, it, uh, is it more on Larson or is it more on the spotter? I always want to say the driver in general because you mm-hmm. can still kind of see, but at the same time, you're trusting – as you're looking straight forward, you're trusting the person in your ears the whole time. If there's a car just barely outside of me, you're telling me that car's there. And if it's not there, which we'll find out, I haven't looked at the radioactive to see when that was called, but you're, you're coming to the stripe. I mean, I hate it because we would have won and I thought it was a crappy move, but I'd have to kind of hear and see it be played out, to be honest. But you know what? We did hit. McDowell over Stenhouse. We did get that. Ooh. We did get that head to head. Yes. You know, we got we got some bets today. And you know what? I think we're drifting in like some opposite directions with how we're doing it. So I'm gonna pull up these odds. These odds, of course, are live via DraftKings. So we're looking here. Larson, obviously, dominant history at Dover. He's at plus 450. Your boy Chase has been um is 900 Byron 900 and this brings me to my first bet I did Byron over Elliot and it's just at minus 150 you know I get it your boy you're rocking the hat you're good. He's, been, you're good. He's, been, he's been the most consistent driver hasn't won a race but he's winning by he's up by 21 points in the standings but here at Dover in this last five races he has two DNFs for those who don't know, he that means he didn't finish the race, and his average finishing position is only 18. It's I not have, his, I, it's, I have to fade him here in a head to head that's basically a pick 'em. Byron over Elliot for me. First it's pick. not it's not Elliot's track. The only reason he is nine to one right now is these odd makers know he's due for a win. He's been the most consistent driver. He's going to get it at some point. I don't see it being this track. Um, oh, I agree with you. He's been insane, but I, I don't think it's this track as well, just because I think it's going to be a track that more suits his strengths as a driver, and this he's showing this one, isn't it? it agreed. This is not his track. We have noticed, though, with the car, the, the next-gen car, 
anything can happen this year. But yeah. I still don't think his crew has really figured out what they need to do to dial this car in to actually get a win. But he's putting himself in a good spot to be able to get into the playoff with or without a win. So moving down here, um, you mentioned – now did you, you said you like Blaney, right? I, like, I, I do like Blaney. Um, okay. He, he's been very consistent all year. He's had some – I'm going to try not to curse. He's had some crap luck completely, okay. um, but he's shown a lot of dominance throughout throughout the entire year. So I do like him at this track. I will be 100% honest. I'm not really familiar with his track history, but I like the way he's been driving. I know his spotter. They, they're they they're doing well, and he's going to grab one of these victories soon. So I like Ryan Blaney at 12-1. to 1. See, this is and this is where we differ. I like Bowman. Over Blaney, I, I did two head to heads. I took Bowman over Bra- Blaney. Okay. This is my thought process. This is Bowman's best track. It it's is a pick on minus one hundred five. He's got four top five finishes in the last five races here, with along with one win. And the last five races that Blaney has had here, he has yet to crack the top ten. And with my thought process. I, and I understand he's been driving gray and, you know, with a new car, the past history, you can't value as much. But when I see someone who's best track versus a driver who's struggled at the track, I got to take Bowman here. Just Whoa. just on that fact alone. No, I like that. I don't have a problem with that. But it's not a bad pick him either, because if you're taking Blaney to win the race, but Bowman to beat him head to head, if Blaney doesn't win that race, you got a good possibility of Bowman yeah. pulling out the victory. So. It's one of those you're going to lose one probably regardless, but at least you're going to profit off of one of the two bets. Yeah. And so now we're, it seems like all my, it seems like I'm the heavy chalk player today because my next guy <laughs> is <It> Harvick. Is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm playing some small guys today. It's he, Harvick. Um, you know, I'm just looking at it. You know, last five races, one win, four top fives. At his worst finish here, I think it's like six. Six or seven. Oh, it's for his worst finish in the last top five is six. And you know what? Last year we talked about at the end of the races how he looked lost and confused. This year he's running pretty good. It's, it's like he's kind of starting to figure it out a little bit. He's got a good history at the track. 12 to 1 with a driver that's put up those numbers. You know, I, I got to take him. No, I'm 100% on board with that pick. I didn't personally pick him, but I will ride that with you. I will fall down just a couple slots. My pick, Tyler Reddick at 16 to 1. Anytime you can get that guy 10 to 1 or higher, he has been consistently in every single race. If he didn't get dumped at Bristol Dirt, we would have hit him at like 20 something to 1. The man is going to win a race this year. Period. Now, let me tell you this. I'm going to read these stats and you guess, the driver, you, you guess the driver's price. Last 10 races at at Dover, he's got eight top 10 finishes. Um, Last five races, last year, he crashed. But before that, he ran second, 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 and then he ran it. And then then he won the race, excuse me. With those numbers, I mean, that that should be a less than 10 to 1 price, or am I wrong? You're right. So before you tell me, I just want to see if I'm right. Is he between 12 to 1 and 25 to 1? He is between 12 to 1 and 25 to 1. I'm either going to lean on Martin Truex Jr. or Kyle Busch. It's Truex Jr. Okay. You know, so that's my other bet. I'm taking yeah. Truex Jr. I mean, 12 to 1. Look, I, I'm the, I'll, everyone who knows me knows I like to swing for the fences, I like playing the dogs. But Not this week. Point, but it's to the point now, like you're looking at it. I mean, it's almost like dog prices are pretty much non-existent now. No, you're right. But I will swing this into a completely different direction. This man in the NASCAR Cup Series has ran 6th, 8th, 3rd, 10th, 11th, 14th, and 9th in his last seven races at Dover in a cup car. Okay. This man is sitting at 40 to 1. This man is the one and only Daniel Suarez. 
at 40 to one. Now, if you told me before I saw those stats the other week leading into Dover, if you would have told me I'm taking Suarez at 40 to one, I would have told you unless he's 80 or 90 to one, don't touch it. But after looking at those stats, you go back to his Xfinity days, 19th, 10th, but then a ninth, a first, a third, and a seventh. And then the truck series, he's only ran twice and finished second both times. Which I know some people say, well, you can't compare Cup and Xfinity to trucks. You can when it becomes how you feel about that track. No matter what race car you're in or style, if you're good at a track, you're good at a track. I am plugging Daniel Suarez at 40 to 1. Love it. Track house have been fast. They've been really fast all year. So here's the thing. I hate to put you on the spot like this. Is Kozlowski going to win a race this year? And if so, which race? If he does, it's going to be Daytona at night or the last Talladega race. The man's struggling. And I'm telling you, it goes back to what I told you about Denny Hamlin last year. These guys that are in this ownership slash driver, they're not focused on driving anymore. Yeah. Like his Lauxy is towards the end of his career, and he's thinking, okay, let me set myself up. He owns uh Brad Kozlowski something that has yeah. nothing to do with racing. It's some sort of machinery. And now he's part of Roush Fenway Kozlowski. I don't think the man's focused on driving. I think he's more focused on how can I pocket money when I'm done racing, which no, no hate on him for that, but you're racing for a team that you partially own. Yeah. So you have to be dealing with finances, sponsorship, media, everything about the company throughout the week. So when are you going to have the time to truly focus on what you're going to do that weekend in the car? Just Dude, to- I'll tell you what, like, I totally get your point. You got to be focused on what you're trying to do. And then when you're running a business and then running another business and trying to race, stuff gets short shortchanged anywhere else. So we're going to remember that thought about Kozlowski. You have one more bet person you like, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about Kozlowski. Scroll all the way down. He has done nothing all season. He hasn't proven anything. He has probably no shot at winning this race. But – I made a promise from the beginning. I'm dropping some dollars on Mr. Harrison Burton in the Wood Brothers car at 200 to 1. He yep. is hitting at some point this year. If I'm wrong, I will send a bush light to anybody that picks him. A. A bush light. A bush light. <laughs> um, so I want to go up. I want to just look at these featured matchups really quick. All right. These are, in my eyes, eh. These are all, I mean, this Truex plus 140 versus Elliot kind of has me a little interested, but I'm already fading Elliot. You mean Reddick? Reddick, excuse me. Reddick against Elliot. My bad. Um, I do everyone like else I would kind of stay away from. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't mind that plus 140. If you're fading Elliot this week, the plus 140 is a good pick. Now you have your boy Suarez. Kislowski head to head. Now, if you're not betting Suarez to win the race, would you take him in this head to head matchup? Absolutely. Uh, the next head to head, we're looking at Kyle against Denny. Kyle. The next one, I've, I've already touched on why I'm taking Bowman over Blaney. I'm doing the same. Hamlin against Logano. I like Logano here. I, I, for whatever reason, I'm not sold on Denny this week. Here's the thing about Logano. When I was looking at my stuff, there's this one site that like grades who's like the most consistent driver. I forget the name of the score they use, but son of a gun, the most consistent driver with how he's been running at every single track is effing Logano. Yeah. Even so, I mean, I totally get it. I totally agree with you. Hamlin's got his win. I think he's just trying to coast and probably focusing more on the 23 45 team. They're going to do everything they can to get that 23 back into victory lane this year to have both Denny and him in the playoffs. And what about Kurt? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're, you're you know, right. They Kurt, could... Kurt's just getting shortchanged. He should have a win under his belt already this year. Yeah. But, um, you know, I already touched on why I like Byron over Elliott. Kurt Bush, Austin Dillon. A Kurt. Austin's ran really, really well, 
but I like Kurt right now. Last last week's winner, Ross Chess Jane against your boy Tyler. I'm taking Tyler all day. To your point, Ross has got two victories now. He's just he I think he's gonna coast in. He's good to go. Logano Truex. Truex, man. I'm with you on his consistency here. Uh Bell Chase Briscoe. Bell. Blaney Truex Jr. Toss up. I I hate to do that to you guys, and I usually like to grab one or the other, but that final one's a complete toss up. Now, again, these bets suck. I mean, look at this: plus two forty to plus two fifty. You know, last year we were able to get these at you know Jesus five four to one. This year they're not giving us any juice. Go back here to race lines. You know, they got rid of the top twenties and top tens. What is uh yeah, see Suarez, that's how much confidence they have on this kid at this track. He's a hundred to one or plus one even to, money. Yeah, even, even money. money. So um I mean the only one I'd even remotely consider here for top ten would be Toddy Boy right here. That'd be the only one I can I would consider, but there's no way I, I would I would do it. No, no way in hell. You're I not touch, you're not touching your boy LaJoy for a top 10? No. Okay. I only do top 20s with LaJoy. I, I had to ask. I had to. Um, construction manufacturer, top Chevrolet. You know, I'm, I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of these because there's so it's it's basically like playing what's it's, that? It's, it, it's you're playing roulette if you bet this. Yeah, like, you're, you're playing I, roulette I, if you bet this. I was thinking of Kinko, that little ball game. It's, it's the same thing. You're picking a number yeah. and crossing your fingers. So I don't I don't like any of these bets. You got uh top four. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There's no there's no point in even even looking at these or betting these. Driver to win the poll. This one can be fun sometimes if it someone can. has a good history here. With that being said. Uh, there's I'm no way in hell I bet it. <laughs> I'm only, I was gonna say, if I had to lean on one person, it's going to be Blaney with just how quick he's been all year. Not, he's that been running good, but, that, but that's plus eight fifty, and at plus eight fifty, is that really even worth it? You know, it's I want not, like I, I like I hate playing numbers under ten to one and anything to do with NASCAR. See, that's actually, why that's why I'm a huge sports gambler because I don't like tables. Yeah, your point with the pole betting a table, you play blackjack. Your twenty-five or fifty-dollar hand can be out the window within seconds. Sports betting—you probably got about a good four hours of sports before your hand is gone. So I don't like the pole bet because within thirty minutes, you know whether you won or lost, and it's just—it's—it's it's a crapshoot. You mentioned black jack. Did I ever tell you about the time I was oh, in Las Vegas? Did you meet Method Man? No, but I have smoked weed with read with read, weed with Redman once. Um, did I ever tell you about the time in Las Vegas? I'm at the Hard Rock Casino, and there's this dude at the table, head down, scruffy ass beard, not saying a word. And my buddy who is with me looks over to him. He goes, "Dude, you're Cato Kalen." Dude pushes all his chips up, grabs him, and just walks away. And son of a gun, it was Cato Kalen. I mean, and let's just say life hasn't been too nice to old Kato, dude. He looked rough. Really? Yeah. Kato looked rough, man. But you know what? That's gonna be another that's gonna be another tale. Uncle Uncle Eric somehow Uncle Eric's that guy who runs into a lot of people. I don't know how. So I will tell you this, Uncle Eric. My goal, I'll be at Charlotte Motor Speedway for Memorial Weekend, Friday, Saturday, okay. Sunday. My goal is to try and grab a driver, whether it's LaJoy, Todd Gillen, somebody from the Xfinity series, to try and join us Friday when we do this, even if it's for a minute, or if we could possibly go live if I grab one on a Saturday and make it something quick and short to have them on here. So my goal for Memorial Weekend, my luck's been good. I've been in victory lane while Kyle Busch has poured champagne on me, having no clue who I am. I've made my way into restricted areas that we probably shouldn't get in. So I'm looking to do that again this year. So 
Okay, man. You yeah. know, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'll be ready to go. I don't think I'm doing anything for Memorial Day weekend. I think I'm laying low. So, you know, I'll be here. I'll have the computer. Computer. God, I can't even talk. I'll have the computer ready you to smoke with up. Method Man before this? Dude, I wish, dude. I would yeah. love to hang out with Ru God, dude. I would love to. Like, if I could go back in time and relive that night, that was a fun-ass night, man. But you know what? You guys, you'll have to pay for that conversation because there's some stuff I can't say on the on the airwaves, Brandon, why don't you tell everyone where they can follow you on social media? Boston Boy 83 on Instagram, uh, Twitch, Twitter. iRacing has kind of been on the back burner right now, focusing on some other stuff that uh, I need to focus on. Uh, Road to Pro just didn't work out for us this year. So we're going to regroup, focus on next year. But uh, when you see the Twitch, follow it, click alert. So whenever time I go live, you guys can join me for the race and, uh, Try and grab a couple wins this weekend just for the hell of it. All right, man. You know, guys, make sure you give Brandon a follow. Let's cash some tickets. Let's make some money. Look forward to talking to you next week, my man. Have a good one, guys. Cash some tickets.